Hey family, we're back. Uh, today we're gonna work on getting this rear suspension put back together. Um, for those that are unfamiliar, your rear suspension on these uh, Volkswagen Beetles, uh, you can have uh, a couple different types when it comes down to how the trailing arms work. I have a 71 pan, 1971 pan, so it's an independent rear suspension uh, with CV axles, but that's not the part we're talking about. We're not talking about the spring, uh, the, the shocks, we're not talking about the IRS. We're talking about the torsion tubes and the torsion springs. So the easiest way to explain it is there are three central components to the rear suspension. There is the main torsion tube, which runs from the outer edge to the inner edge. And then there's a torsion bar, which is basically just a steel bar that's manufactured with a certain spring rate. So as it twists, it will spring back. So it's, uh, it is a spring in and of itself. And the third piece is the torsion spring plate. So you'll see on the end of the torsion bar, it has splines at either end, and there's actually two different uh, numbers of splines. In here, all right, I'll take a step back. So this torsion tube, or torsion bar, will go into the torsion tube. And then the end of the torsion tube, down there, are splines, uh, corresponding splines to the uh, torsion bar. So when I pulled everything apart, I marked that this is the outer end of the torsion bar. So I know that these splines correspond with the number of splines in there. And I said earlier that there's a different number. I believe it's 40 on the inside and 44 on the outside. So on this end, there's a corresponding number of splines on the inside end of this tube. So really what you do is, depending on how this torsion plate is indexed, on, the, on those splines, that predicts your spring rate. So if, you're, uh, if you've ever taken one of these apart, this plate sits on this uh, level and is bolted into place. Uh, it's held in with a spring plate. So it is, is bolted on and kept in place, bolted onto the, the rear um, housing for the torsion tube uh, and this arm that comes up. So everything's held in, it's kept in place. But depending on how you clock this, how you index it, if you index it so that there's more of a reach here by the time you bring this plate up to set onto here, um, it'll be tighter, which means that your spring rate will be tighter. And um, You'll, you'll ride a lot harder, and if you weren't setting onto here uh, as your bottom resting plate, um, you would actually ride higher. Now, if you want to lower your, your bug, uh, one of the ways to do it, and there are a number of ways, uh, this is one of them, it's probably not the best, um, is to index so that you're higher. And this is for demonstration purposes only, but if I index to here, and then get this all set up and pushed back in, then the spring rate of this torsion bar is much less. And so, but once you put the body on, once you put the engine on, the transmission, it's weighing everything down, and so you're actually lowering the car. So there's a few really good websites. Here's one right here. The site is Zen VW, as you probably saw in that picture. Um, they have a lot of really good information on there. And one of the pages includes full tables for how the torsion tubes get indexed um, or torsion bars get indexed in, in relation to one another. So in reality, if, um, if we follow that table, we should be able to set our ride height for whatever we want. So our first step is we leveled the chassis front to back. I have my digital level. This guy is really nice and cheap on Amazon, but it works really well. I'm 2.1 degree there, all right? 
Um, and so what I'm going to do is because I, I want to have everything relative, I'm actually going to zero it. So this is my new zero. I'm going to say that's zero degrees. So when I come back to here, following that table, if I have this rear plate indexed to 20 degrees, oops, let's not drop the level. Error, error. If we index that plate to 20 degrees, which means I need to go up. So based on that table, if we have this spring plate at 20 degrees angle relative to the pan being flat, which we've flattened out the car and we are at zero degrees, nice and level. If I move my level over to the spring plate, if I move my level over to my spring plate, I can see that I'm at 20 degrees, 19.9. That's close enough. Now, that is our, our base rate. That is what natural resting position would be if I wanted to stay at stock height based on that table. Now, I want to lower the back of the car three inches. So what I would do is I would clock the inside of the tube I would clock it four degrees counterclockwise based on that table. And I would clock the outer part of the tube three notches clockwise. And that will give me a lowered height of three inches. And that's a really easy way to adjust your, your height. Now I'm going to walk you through the rest of putting these spring plates on. And ultimately, when I get my new front suspension when it, um, that I ordered from Air Cooled, um, I am going to have it pretty low. I'm going to have this car pretty low. But for right now, I have a stock front end. And that means that if I dropped the back end, I'm going to be looking like one of those goofy pickup trucks doing a Carolina squat down the highway. It looks like, it's it looks like a dog dragging its butt on the carpet. So for now, I'm going to set this car at stock height. I'm just going to leave it at stock height. Um, and when I get my new front suspension, I can re-index really easily. I can pull these plates back off, re-index it, and reset it to the ride height I want. And it's, it's really cool because you can set your front suspension to your ride height that you want. You can set your rear suspension to the ride height you want. And it's so simple. You can drop this down in half an hour if, if you're if you are comfortable with what you're doing now let me show you how to put the rest of the stuff together here so what you need to do is you need to lift that spring plate up into position to sit on that notch like we talked about um this thing is under tension so it's not like you're just going to lift it up with your hand and slide it in um so most of the time you end up with a you can lift it with a jack uh, or, you know, uh, you can try and use, uh, um, like, tie-down straps. That ends up becoming really risky. They make a tool for this specific purpose. And what this does is it fits on here. You have a, a notch that fits. Your spring plate fits down in there. And the top goes over. Um, and the one that you can buy online actually goes over... The, on the uh, where the bump stop screws in, but I actually modified it a little bit. Modified my version of the tool, I built it, um, and on this top plate, uh, I, I, I welded a, a nut with a through hole. So realistically, I can come in here and I can thread this into the um, bump stop hole, and I can drop my tool on top of it so that it stays in place where I need it to be and it stays out of trouble. Let me go ahead and set this up and we'll come back in a second. Okay, so as I crank up the tool, since it's on the threaded rod here, it's going to lift this plate higher and higher. 
all things considered, this should be working just fine, and I should be getting a change in detonation. And it's going to raise this plate until I can get it on the keeper back here. So let's see if I can get through this. All right, using the tool, uh, we lifted the plate up and uh, tapped it into place. Basically, you wanna get it so it's just on that lip. Uh, you can see I chipped away a little bit of the paint off to touch that up. I know this is really good, strong paint, but that was a lot of um, friction right there. So get it onto the plate, reduce some of the tension on the bar, and then I used a rubber mallet to just kind of tap it in a little bit further and then you put your bolts in and tighten them down. Um, check the proper torque in your reference manual. Now the last piece of getting this all back together is to put the bolts back in between the two uh, pieces between the IRS arm and the, and the plate itself. So once that's done, then the suspension is put back together on this side. I'll put a shock in from the shock tower down to the bottom of the IRS arm. And then we'll repeat for the other side. And then it looks like it's about time for brakes on the back of this thing. I'm just gonna put them in loose, finger tight to start with. And then I'll tighten them down with the wrench, or the impact wrench. There's a, a number of washers, so just make sure that you're you're splitting them properly. Um, it's, there's three on it, so two on the, on the uh, outside face and one, on, one behind with the nut. You don't want to tighten any of them down until you get them all ready because they, uh, you, you, just, you need that play in here to be able to get the bolts in because all the holes won't line up ex exactly. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you take these plates off, you undo these plates and you haven't marked everything exactly, uh, your rear alignment will be off. So this is part of your rear alignment. Um, it will adjust your um, see, camber angle. Uh, so the caster is this way, camber is this way. So this will adjust your camber angle. Um, so if if you were trying to do this while it's already well, you've already had the car aligned. You want to make sure that you mark which bolt goes in which hole, and then mark exactly where each bolt is because each of the holes down here. Um, is ovoid so let me pop back this one out real quick uh, let me get what, actually get this one so they all have a little slop in them uh, side to side uh, especially on the plate itself so th there's a little uh you can see how that moves side to side so there's a little play in there and there's also a little play in the plate uh, so it gives you the ability to adjust your alignment in the rear now, if you're gonna get your car realigned, that's a good idea um, because even if you keep your alignment right where it was, because you're going to change your suspension geometry um, by lowering or raising the car, by either going up or down, um, that's gonna change your camber angle. So the way your tire tips in and out um, relative to your spindle or um, the way it's tipped, uh, toe in, toe out. Uh, so all of that's going to change when you low up, uh, raise or lower your car. So let me tighten these down, and uh, we'll be done with this side.
underneath it. Tightened up. Um, any paint that you scratch up, if you really want to, like I'm gonna go back and do a couple touch up pieces where things overlap, where there's some tightness. Um, but remember that this is an area of movement. So you are likely to get some wear on any friction surfaces. Um, so you'll have one down here where the spring plate drop, drops back onto its rest point. Um, but you can go in and, and do any touch up that you need to. Uh, but that's suspension on one side. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna replicate on the other side and uh, we'll be ready to put brakes on. All right, so I appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, we're getting some more serious progress on this. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you want me to, to explain anything else, uh, try anything or avoid anything. Uh, it's been a long time since I've built a, a Beetle, um, but if, uh, if you guys have any points or, or tricks, just let me know. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.